show is sponsored by Hive Mind CRM. It is more than just a CRM. It is a real estate and business mastermind that comes with an all-in-one CRM. You can have unlimited websites and users. You can call, text, RVM, and email all in one user interface. And you can set up custom automations for any type and multiple businesses. 65% of companies start using a CRM system within the first five years of business. Once implemented, the hive mind will save you on marketing, give you more time, and make more money. One of our users has had his first $100,000 month using our system in June. We want to see you automate and accelerate your business. Text us at 210-972-1842 for future meetings. And of course, to get our $1 course on how to make more than six figures on one land deal. You can schedule your free demo today at hivemindcrm.io. In the industry, you got you to gotta have more tools in your tool belt. You can't just do properties anymore multifamily. You also have to touch base on land, right? And then a lot of you here who don't already have a CRM, we have to understand that you need a CRM as well. So we wanted to make sure that we keep focused on different points here just to talk, learn something new, and of course, network. So if you guys haven't met each other already, make sure you guys get each other's numbers, okay? Every last Thursday of the month, we're here. Same old story, nothing different, but always make sure you guys network. You guys aren't doing deals together, you're doing it wrong, okay? So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce a buddy of ours, Daniel, CEO and owner of Hivemind. Don't forget to use the QR codes on the table. If you wanna check out the CRM, give it a scan, and don't forget, if you guys ever wanna work deals with each other, we could be your buyer. We have plenty of hedge funds to work with, anything at all. I mean, if you guys just wanna talk about deals in general, come on by, okay? So don't forget to use the QR codes and reach out anytime. So without further ado, Daniel. Appreciate it, appreciate it. For Steven here, I met, I met Steven literally sub two in LA. And uh, I was like, are you sick of podio yet? <laughs> and that was the question I asked him. And he could attest, he's like, yeah, I'm sick of podio. But uh, we're, we're gonna cover a lot of different things, but a lot of people in this business is, you gotta ask for the business. It's the bottom line. You got to ask for the business. But for everybody that doesn't know me, my name is Daniel Martinez. I am Daniel Hivemind on Instagram. I've been in real estate for four years. So a lot can happen in a short amount of time. But part of why I'm here is I just decided to make a decision to start entrepreneurship one day. And as crazy as that seems, it wasn't, there's never a good time to start it. So there's never a good time to start entrepreneurship. So you got to just dive in for everybody here. If you haven't done your first deal, it took me seven months to do my first deal and contracted a lot of houses and it didn't work out for me very well. I, I was living in Georgia at the time and uh, I contracted like a house, had it closing. I was gonna make $25,000 when I signed it. Friday, the Monday before close, or the Friday before close on a Monday, the seller actually passed away. So uh, I lost out on that deal and uh, I really didn't know when, when the best time to follow up was. So I'm just like, let me just, I filed a memo on it and wait. And uh, I've checked back a year later and they sold it again for the same price. And this is pandemic. So it was probably worth fifty to $100,000 or more. So follow-up is really, really important. And houses are not. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a joke about that throughout the whole time because I do, we do land, 100% strictly land. And I'll cover the reasons why we do land as a whole. But I used to be a truck driver. So for everybody out here that has a nine to five still. I mean, I used to literally drive trucks about three years ago. I was still driving trucks. My first company I started was a trucking company. And it was one of those things where like, I wanted to do entrepreneurship, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And uh, I had a CDL. So I'm like, let me just start a trucking company and kind of drive down that route. I did that for two years. Ended up grossing like $550,000 in two years. Sounds like a lot of money, right? Who thinks it's a lot of money? I lost a hundred grand. <laughs> So I lost 100 grand in trucking, even though I made 550. But it shows the show that not all businesses should be run by you. So you get to think about what the outcome and energy that you're putting out there is worth for the right. Put it to the right things that you're going to get generate results. So I learned that the hard way, but it's a it's a failure that I, I built upon because most people that go on to do entrepreneurship they get wiped out, and the thing that separates everybody else is survival. So I always make the joke that if you survive long enough there, if you survive long enough in entrepreneurship, you'll get there. <laughs> so that's, that's my little joke. 
But for everybody here, like I said, I went through that, that struggle of uh, the, through the trucking business. And I'm a product of podcasting because I used to drive a lot. So you listen to music. And when I, when I was already making the decision of doing entrepreneurship, I'm like, man, I have to do something better with my time because if I'm literally have all these hours and I'm just listening to music, what value do you really get from that? So I started uh, listening to a lot of podcasting. And that's what really opened my eyes to real estate. And that's how I kind of ended up down this road. So when my trucking company was going to, going, going to heck... <laughs> Sorry, when my trucking company was going, was going, I was like, man, I, I need to do this real estate thing. So I kind of fell down the YouTube rabbit hole and the podcast rabbit hole of podcasting, and I learned a lot just by listening to podcasts. So one of the big reasons why I do podcasting is because I'm a product of it. And if anybody doesn't know, I have a Hive with us podcast on all everywhere you can look: YouTube, Spotify, Apple. I produce a lot of podcasts for that reason because I'm a product of it. So I like giving back to the community, and that's just one of the big reasons why I do it. But back to when I was uh, starting to do real estate, man, one seller died on me. I had another one with, uh, I contracted a property and I went to, it was a, a seller had another house. It was vacant. So like family member needed a place to stay. He's like, oh, I'll let you stay there. Don't let family stay in your houses. <laughs> and uh, they stopped paying rent. So now he's paying the mortgage on top, on top of his own mortgage. Family's in the other house. He doesn't want to deal with them and kick them out, whatever. So I contracted it. I'm like, you know what, Mr. Seller, let me handle this for you and I'll evict them. Never done an eviction before. So I contracted it. I'm going to the seller. They were nice to me, but they were nice to him. So I knocked on the window. I'm like, hey, I, I'm, I'm here to buy this property. We're here to close. I need you out of the house. I understand you need time. Is there any time, any way you can give me like a time you can move out? They're like, no, 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 go away, whatever. So I'm like, all right. You gotta go through the eviction process. So I'm like, uh, I, I go to him, like, I need you to sign this paperwork. I found some paperwork online to represent as a property manager. Cause I'm like, I have to, like, if the judge asked me that, uh, what's your relation to this transaction? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm the property manager. So I'm like, I got some property manager paperwork. And I went to the seller, I'm like, I need you to sign this so I can go evict them. He's like, all right, just, I just need them out of the house. I'm like, all right. So I filed all the paperwork, put my own money, submitted it all in court. Learned that whole process for the first time of evicting a tenant out of somebody else's house. <laughs> and I finally got him out of the house. It took, a, that took like two, three weeks. I got him out of the house. And finally, eviction's over. Try to, they trashed the house, of course. So I called my buddy. I'm like, hey, I need your help to move all this stuff out the house. I'm going to get a dumpster. I know a dumpster guy from the RIA, the local RIA. We're gonna call him up. He's gonna drop the dumpster off. We're gonna load up this this dumpster. We're gonna clear this out. We're gonna make 20 grand on this deal. He's like, all right. So, him being a good friend, he uh, helps me load up all this. We we clean up the whole house, couches, clothes. The garage is stacked high. We clean out the whole house. We didn't vacuum it, but it was it was trashed. <laughs> it was trashed, and we gotta finally get it cleaned out. And I'm like, okay, I found now next is the buyer. So I find a buyer, Buy, buyer comes in. He's like, the, with the repairs necessary, the numbers don't make sense, man. So I learned about subject two. So I'm like, okay, what if the mortgage stays in place? Can, will you, do your numbers work now? He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. So I go back to the seller. Hey, I need you to leave the mortgage in place. <laughs> I need you to leave the mortgage in place because the numbers don't make sense with the equity that we could potentially sell it for and with all the repairs that are required, we have to do this. So go get more paperwork. Hey, I need you to sign this paperwork now too. So he, he, he agrees to sell sub two and we get to the closing table and the seller's like, my car's broke down. I can't get to the, to the title company. And me, my, my, my smart person, I'm like, the title company I chose was somebody from the RIA. Hey, use this title company. So I use it an hour and a half away on the other side of town. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to come pick you up in 30 minutes. Let's go. So I uh, pick him up, talk, to with him, talk with him all the way to the closing table. His wife shows up because she was somewhere and she had the car. That's why you couldn't get to the, to the closing. The title company I was using, I guess, didn't. They worked with wholesalers, but they didn't pull title till last minute because deals fall through all the time, which I really don't understand that, but now I understand it. But not back then, I'm like, why didn't you pull title? So they're pulling title right when we get there. They're doing all the paperwork. The lady's like, Daniel, come here. I'm like, oh, no. 
what's going on now? So she pulls me aside and she's like, did, she, did the seller tell you that he has an underlying credit card lien that's $30,000? No, he didn't tell me that. Okay, so we can't do the deal? Nope. I have the buyer in the lobby ready to sign. He knows I'm assigning. He knows what I'm making. I was going to make like $15,000 to negotiate it down. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Now I got <laughs> now, now I got to like now I got to drive home for an hour and a half with my tail between my legs. I was, I was expecting to drive home with a check, <laughs> but nothing. So after my experience with houses, I'm like, man, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. So I started, me and my, how I got into real estate was I took a course. I bought a course for $250. And there was a guy in that group, he's like, I'm doing land. And I'm like, what? Land? Why would you do land? So for everybody that, that was like, why, why would you do land as a wholesale deal? Well, because it doesn't cash flow. Well, why would you do that? Because they're motivated just by owning it. So they have to pay taxes. So with houses, they know they can rent it out. They know they can sell it. They know they can let their cousin live there. They know they can Airbnb it. They know they can put anything they want. They can do all, all these options. They can leave it empty for all they care. They have all these options. With land, it's just there. It doesn't produce income. It doesn't cash flow. They have to pay taxes every year, and it's just there. It's a nuisance. It's usually free and clear, passed down from generation to generation. They've never seen it before. It has no value to them. How is that beneficial? Well, it's beneficial because there's no, there's no emotional attachment to it. It's easier to negotiate. It's easier to negotiate a seller finance because there's 100% no, there's equity. And you can cash flow it by seller financing using creative finance, which is why we're here, creative finance, right? <laughs> so all, the, all this stuff to leads into kind of going on the land game. So my first deal, I hate, I'm like, this is this, I'm really an introvert, really, really introvert. For every, every like me five years ago, I'd never be doing this ever. And with cameras around, being mic'd up, doing the YouTube videos, never in my life would I have thought I would ever end up down this rabbit hole. But here I am talking to you guys. So for everybody, for everybody about that is just, you got to get out of your comfort zone sometimes and you don't know where, where the path is going to take you. So you just got to do it. So my first contract that I got, I was like, I'm like, let me just do a website. So I got a carrot website. Everybody had a carrot website. So let me just get a carrot website and let me do some ads. I'll throw five bucks a day at it and see what happens. So I had this lady come in with, and I was targeting land. She's like, I have this property in Florida that I keep on getting fined from the city for people dumping on my property. So I'm like, okay, all right, let me see what this is worth. Oh, and another benefit of land, there's, there's not very many comps, depending on the area. But good thing with Florida, there's a lot of little infill lots that have good comps. So I kind of, I comped it, and uh, I was like, this thing's about $20,000. And what I know about land is, yes, you can sell it for full price, but at, at this time, I'm like, if you really want to move it fast, you got to sell it at a discount. That way, everyone's like, oh, I'm buying this at a deal. Just like you do with houses, you sell it at a deal, at a discount. So I was like, things are worth about $20,000. If I can get this for around five, it's going to be a deal. It's going to be a good deal. It's not going to be maybe like five, 10 grand. We'll, we'll see what we can do. So I shot her an offer. And this is all through email. I never talked to the seller. I emailed her back. Would you take? $4,230.32. She gonna take that? So she responds like an hour later, like, I'll take five grand. I'm like, yes, five grand. That's exactly what I wanted. So I sent her the contract. I locked it up for five grand. I was like, what do you do now? You put it on Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace. It's the best place to sell deals. So I put it on Facebook Marketplace for $12,000. And I found a buyer in two days. My, 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 my messenger started blowing up. And uh, a buyer came in. He's like, I'll buy this $12,000. Take it off Marketplace. I want to buy it right now. I'm like, all right. So we negotiate the whole thing. And $12,000, I'm like, I'm, ready. I said, I'm like, I'm going to send you the purchase sale agreement right now. Let's get this done. He's like, all right, I'll, I'll sign it tonight. And I'll, I'll, I'll let you know first in the morning. So I send it tonight. I wake up in the morning. And I, my phone's blowing up. because I gave him my phone number. I'm like, who's calling me? And uh, guess who it is? It's an agent representing the buyer. And I'm like, I just negotiated everything out. I don't even need you. Like, 
come on, m- m- Mrs. Mrs. Agent, like this is this is already a done deal. I, the terms, the contracts already it's already out there. And she's like, well, the bu- the buyer called me and he wants me to represent him. So in my head, I'm like, what's three percent of twelve grand? You know what? I'll pay clo- I'll I'll pay your fee. I'll pay your fee. So after after she she agreed to work with me. She's like, can you up my payment to $500? The title company's an hour away. I'm like, yeah, I'll give you $500. Just make sure you sign. <laughs> and that's my deal, man. I made six grand, had to pay the agent $500. I made $5,500. And I've been doing land ever since. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of how I fell into it. And uh, me and my partner, the one that in that Facebook group, we took the same course. We ended up working together because everybody else is doing houses. And I'm like, I'm, I'm sticking to land because... I've, I got burned with the eviction. I got burned with the other one. The, the guy passed away. I'm like, man, this is... And that was like seamless. I never talked to the seller, never talked to the buyer, never talked to the title company. And I did the whole transaction via email. I'm like, this is an introvert's dream. <laughs> so that's, that's what happened. So you can really negotiate amazing terms when you're talking to land seller. So a deal we did about a year and a half ago, I talked about land not cash flowing. It doesn't cash flow for sellers, but us using creative finance, we can make a cash flow for us. So we had a deal come in. We, we still did people. Our main lead generation we do is uh, texting and PPC. So texting and PPC, and we use Highbind, of course. Texting outbound, and we use PPC, the same thing as Highbind. So we had, a, we had a guy come in. He's like, he has a $35,000 lot. How many $35,000 lots are out there? Thousands, right? Maybe millions. Who knows? $35,000 lot. He's like, I want, we're asking, he's like, I want to sell my lot. How much will you take for it? He's like, 15. 15 is already halfway. But if that's his opening offer, we're like, I'll give you eight. He's like, no, no, I need 15. You don't understand. He's like, I'll give you eight. And my partner, he's like, I'll give you eight. No, we're not doing 15. Don't worry about it. We're not doing 15. So the dude came back. So 90 days later, follow up is key. He's like, hey, I remember you wanted to buy my lot. He's like, yeah, I want to buy your lot. What's it, uh, tell me the details about it. He's like, yeah, I want 15 for it and da 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 He's like, hey, I remember you. I told you eight. He's like, what will you give me now? $8,000. He's like, all right. So we got the con- under contract for $8,000. Guess what we did? We put it on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> At what price point? 45. It was only worth 35. So what are we? What am I doing here? I did 45,000 with 8,000 dollars down. Where's the 8,000 going? To the bot, to the seller. What am I getting? Payments. So I sold it in a week. 500 dollars a month. 8,000 dollars went straight to the seller. Now I'm cash flowing 500 dollars a month. What's the hey, what's the average rental income you get on a rental property in Indiana? $500,000, asset, one fifty dollars to $250,000. So he has a one fifty dollars to $250,000 asset, cash flowing $500, $35,000 lot. I'm sticking to land. I'm digging in. I'm digging in. So now we're, 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 we're coming across like, okay, we kind of got the concept. You lock the property up, discount it. You oversell it overpriced. And then you do seller financing. How big a deals can we do? All right, now now we're talking. So everybody, everybody, every the average wholesale fee is twenty thousand dollars across. I know it's different here for the people here in California listening to this, watching this later. It might be different here, but Cal- everywhere else is about twenty thousand dollars. And most of the land deals we're doing fifty, sixty, seventy-five thousand dollars on each lot. So we're like, okay, if we're beating the average wholesale fee on, on land, raw land with no, no utilities, no nothing, floodplain, it doesn't even matter. People want floodplain properties too. So we're like, okay, if we're doing these numbers on land, let's just do bigger deals. So we started targeting bigger lots. So last year we bought 107 acres. What do we do? When you, when you buy, we use seller finance, creative finance. We negotiated $200,000 down. 800,000 seller carry and we subdivided we subdivided the lot, the 107 acres into not 10 11 acre lots or it was like 9 10 it was not 10 11 acre lots that's right 10 11 acre lots 
And then we, sub we subdivide it. So I don't do any deals here in, in California, none, all in Texas. And the reason why is because my partner's there and for all the introverts out there, I don't do none of the front end sales. So when you partner with other people, you don't have to do all the things required to do in real estate. There's acquisitions, there's marketing, there's sales, there's dispositions, there's transaction coordination. There's all these things that come with a real estate business. But if you partner or outsource, you don't have to do all the things you don't want to do. So everybody talks about build, build your strengths, build, build your weaknesses, build your weaknesses. Let all that stuff go. Focus on your strengths and partner or partner or hire your weaknesses. You can go a lot further. So my partner is all the sales. Guess what? I work from the house. My, my family's like, I'm originally from Chicago. They're like, how do you deal with California traffic? And I'm like, yeah, I literally roll out of bed and go straight to the office and I'm, I'm at work. <laughs> like, what, what's the commute? I don't know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> so back to the 100 acres. We bought 100 acre seller finance, $200,000 down. We got private capital to put the $200,000 down. $800,000 seller finance. If you pull out, if everybody does financing with the 10 BII, it's like 3,000 a month. We're like, we'll give you 2,500 a month with a two year balloon. And we're just trying to make up numbers, trying to keep the, that payment down as low as possible just so we can do what we need to do. So in Texas, you can subdivide a large acreage into 10, or, as long as it's 10 or more acres, you can subdivide that lot as many times as you want. So 100 acres, 10, 11 acre lots, all you need is an engineer to cut up that property. So what we're doing, we're just like wholesaling, we're using paper, cutting it up, and then subdividing in smaller lots. And then at a, at, when the lots are smaller, you can sell it for more price per acre. So that's what you learn. So the bigger it is, the cheaper it is. And when you cut it down, you essentially force appreciation. So that's what we're doing. So that lot, we ended up, it took us nine months from close, from the $200,000 financing to the, uh, we sold all the lots. We ended up uh, making 200K in cash and 200K in notes that still pay us. So now we're making money off of transactions that we did and cash flowing that deal. So now we're like, we need to do more of these. Let's go, let's turn it up. So. Now we're strictly targeting larger assets, do the same process. We sold all those deals on Facebook Marketplace, and that's, how we, that's our whole strategy. Large acres, cut it down to small acres so that people will buy it. We're seller financing it and creating paper and then cash flowing that deal for whatever we need to. So we sold off the notes to pay off the seller, pay off our private capital, and then we kept the rest of the notes. And that's how we got the, the, the spread that we did. So right now, we bought 125 acres about 45 days ago outside of Dallas for 175. We bought it for like 1,300 an acre. It's actually on sale on market right now for 600. What are we offering? Seller financing with $200,000 down. <laughs> I'm getting really repetitive here, but I want you guys to understand that you can really you can really do this with seller financing and creating opportunity, especially with land, because you can get a really good deal. If you talk to enough people, that's just the whole strategy. So how do you talk to a lot of people, Steven? Hive mind. <laughs> so we text a lot of people and it's just a numbers game. People want to sell their house creatively with down, with down payments, with 100% seller financing by talking to a lot of people. That's it. I think it's uh, Brent Daniels says TTP. Talk to people, talk to people. That's it. If you talk to enough people, people will negotiate with you and give you the terms you want to make a deal happen. So that's our whole strategy. We're, we're using creative finance, we're using subject to. If loan's in place or not, we're taking over payments and we're giving them the money they want. As interest rates are going up, that's, it's, it's gonna make more opportunity for us. There's properties on the market right now in every market that have been listed, especially land, for over a year. How motivated are the sellers? Really motivated. And especially with high interest rates, you can negotiate seller financing. So we actually, uh, we do a land mastermind. We pretty much teach you how to market and get those deals. If you get a seller on the phone, we'll help contract and, and close that deal for you. Uh, we had a, a seller, uh, we had a, one of our students, literally, he was just, he's just talking to people, talking to people. So we teach our people to just go talk to people. And if you find a good lead, 
seller wants to do sell its finance terms, bring it to us. One of our clients just locked the, uh, we're locking up a $16.9 million lot of 252 acres. And it was brought to us by one of our students. I don't know what we're going to pay him, but he's going to make a pretty good check. And he still has a nine to five. So a lot of crazy things happen when you do bigger deals. And that's going back to the fact that small deals pay small wholesale fees, big deals pay big wholesale fees. You just got to find the people playing at a higher level and find those deals for them and you can do bigger checks. So, and the good thing about bigger checks is you don't have to do all the things required in a regular wholesale business. If you just do the marketing, that's enough. If you just do the sales, that's enough. If you bring the money, that's enough for bigger deals. It's just like uh, multifamily. So we're trying to do more deals. We have a deal we're working right now. The two owners are real estate agents. They didn't want to sell it. So they found a land specialist to list it. Been on the market for a year. It hasn't moved. We came in. We offered them seller finance. And we're trying to create... $3.2 $3.2 million of notes on a property that listed for a year that hasn't moved, that owned by agents. And the agents know what we're doing because we told them. And they're okay with it because they're just ready to move. They got this thing, seller finance, where they're paying out almost $5,000 a month. So they put already $60,000 themselves personally. Negative cash flowing. How much motivation do you need? People that negative cash flow. <laughs> so it's just talking to people, figuring out what they need, what, what timeline they need negotiating seller finance terms, payments. We're, we're paying two owners. One wants cash, one wants payments. So guess what we do? Pay the other one in cash, the other one payments. That's less cash we got to throw out now, less notes we got to sell, we just pay them off in payments. So everything's negotiable in real estate and you can take it any direction you want. It's all about the, your, negotiating, your negotiation strategy and what tools you have in your tool belt. So we, me and Steve, we talk a lot about creative finance and the powers of that. So once you understand that, you can really do whatever you want and it's limitless what, what assets you can target and what assets you can get. So talk a little bit about HiveMind. HiveMind is a software CRM. We launched that. For everybody that's been in real estate for a while, who here has used Podio at least once? Podio, Podio. <laughs> He was, tell, he was telling me earlier, he's like, I hate Podio. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> and that's uh, Steve's, Steve's uh, sales acquisition. He's on Steven's team. So Steven's one of my clients. So he's over here with Podio. And me, I had the same issue. I went in, everybody's using Podio. I'm like, okay, I'm the tech guy, so I have to learn this stuff. And I'm like, I went in this thing, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why is it so difficult to do this? And I'm techie. So... I saw an opportunity to launch HiveMind, and we've really dug into providing as much value as possible. We give a lot of our money back to our clients, and we're just producing an awesome community, which is why we kind of intermingle with, with Sub2, is because a lot of my clients are in Sub2, and it's the same thing. We're sharing, sharing information, sharing knowledge, partnering with each other. I had a client, he was good, Matt Rogers, he just spoke in LA. He literally came into HiveMind, he's like, I just want to use texting. And Matt Rogers, if you ever met him, he's a Neanderthal. He's like, I hate technology. I don't want to use anything else. So he came in and he's like, Daniel, show me how to text. That's all I want to do. I want to do just that one thing and that's it. I'm like, all right, I got you. So I showed him how to text. He comes back to me four days later. Dude, I got a contract in Florida. I'm like, what? Are you serious? He's like, yeah, I got a contract in Florida. I'm like, all right. Well, I have clients in Florida. Go talk to one of them. He's like, all right. So uh, he contacted one of my Florida clients that moves lots in Florida. And he hit him up and he's like, I have this lot. Boom. He's like, I got a buyer for it. They went from, he signed up, got a contract in four days. They closed in 22 days, both made $7,000. I didn't get paid on that, but they did. And it's one, it one of the things of leveraging the network that, that the HiveMind brings. And it's really cool because I have, I have clients all over the US. I have clients in four countries, actually five countries now. I have clients in five countries that they leverage and, and, and work with each other across the United States, and they use the system. So it's a really cool community, and it's just collaboration, 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 collaboration. I have tons and tons of stories. I'll tell you another story I have. So I have a client that does land deals in like 30 states. He buys and sells with cash and sells on open market. He had a, a, a lot in Wisconsin. So a buyer came in, he's like, I want that lot. He's like, all right, 
and the buyer did the same thing that my buyer that my buyer did the other day. He's like, I have an agent. I wanted to run through my agent, and he has to go through him. He has to approve all the documents and all the stuff and all the stuff for the title company. So he's like, all right, let me talk to your agent. So your agent starts talking to him, and there was an agent from Wisconsin. My my seller, the, my 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 client, my client buyer is from Massachusetts, and he starts talking to him, talking to him, and after a few minutes. Like, hey, are you so and so from the hive mind? He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm from the hive mind too. You, I know Daniel very well. I talked to him yesterday. I'm like, what? <laughs> the buyer's agent that he brought in was another hive mind client that the seller was selling a lot to. Crazy. Stuff happens in the weirdest ways, but it shows the network and people collaborating, and it's just it's crazy. So I talk about business automation a lot. Does anybody wants to know what business automation looks like? All right, somebody's really excited back there. I see you. I see you. Don't worry. I'll make eye contact. <laughs> so everybody, pull out your phones. I'm gonna show you what business automation looks like. Business automation looks like. So I have a Texas number because that's just the number I memorized. So if you pull out your text messages, and I want you to text this number: two one zero nine seven two. 1842. Again, we're sending a text message to 210-972-1842. All right, we're going to text SoCal, S-O-C-A-L. This is all SoCal JV, so text SoCal. So I am not wearing my phone. Actually, I am. I should take it out of my pocket because it's going off. <laughs> so... I did, this, I did this demonstration. I was speaking in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and there was 300 people in the audience, and I, I did the same presentation, pull out your phones, but I thought ahead and I gave my phone to my buddy. I had 100 people text me in 90, in 90 seconds. <laughs> and if you, have, if you got the first text, guess what? You're now, part of the, you're now part of the system. You are one of us, part of the hive mind. So uh, that'll text you um, our YouTube channel, our podcast. You'll get text for the next 30 minutes. Congratulations. You've been infected. <laughs> hey, it's not spam, all right? <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. I know you're whispering to your partner, but I heard you. I don't spam people. I'm trying to contract sellers to make a negotiations. I'm not offering anything to sell. <laughs> so... For every, and uh, you'll get a text. I think it's the second text. You'll get an offer to our land mastermind. If you're interested in that, like I said, we're teaching everyday people how to target big land deals and make big, big checks and hopefully go off and do it yourself. So I had a client that we used to do weekly education for free. And uh, I had a client just, he'd listen in, listen in, listen in. And then he fell off the map. I'm like, where'd this guy go? He came back like six months later, and he's like, yeah, I did three subdivides. I'm working on my fourth and fifth one right now. I'm like, holy crap, where'd you go? <laughs> but a lot of this thing is just taking action. You can get all the information in the world, but if you don't take action, it goes out the other ear. So everything I said, you got to take action on it. I did a podcast today with a guy, and he's like, <laughs> he, said, he said he was listening to another land guy. And he's like, I learned to, the list to pull is to out-of-state owners, and then I left the call, and then I pulled out-of-state owners, and I did $700,000 in land my first year of gross profit. And he's like, the whole thing is taking action. So for everybody here, target land, out-of-state owners. Land is an underlying motivation for everything because of negative cash flows. You can really find a good deal. You can make big deals happen. They're just zeros. So go out there and make big checks. There you go. So let, let's open it up for some questions, all right? Now, you guys understand that you can make money just by selling land. So let's, does anyone have any questions they want to kick off? Anybody getting in any land deals tomorrow on Facebook Marketplace? Uh -huh. hey, this might be a dumb question. Is there possible uh, to have a lien on a land? A uh, lien on land? Yeah. Yes. What do we do with liens? We take over sub two, just like houses. So that $2 million deal with the, with the, with the agents, there's a $1.4 million underlying lien that we're trying to take over subject to. That is just a regular everyday owner. So our goal, with, our strategy with that one is we're trying to keep it in place 
and just negotiate a partial release, release of lien. That way we can take over and subdivide the properties. And uh, hopefully we'll give him extra points because he's at 5% interest. Our goal is to bump it up. That way we can keep the lien in place so we don't have to bring up that $1.4 million to do that deal. Do, do you do a title search when you buy land then? Yes, title search, title search, title search. We still use title companies just like people that do houses. We contract, everything goes to title. We make sure there's no underlying liens, all that stuff. If there's stuff in first, second position, we determine that. And we do a lot of trouble title stuff in Texas too. So if there's stuff in second, third position, and if we're getting that first position, whatever that is, we can leverage that. If there's lien or IRS, we can always negotiate that down. So it really depends on, like, we always do a title search and try and see what liens are there and see if we can remove them or negotiate them down because these are always negotiable. So how, how do you find the leads? Like, I've... Because I've actually been looking at into buying land the past, I don't know, year and a half for personal use. But I've also been thinking about like investing too. But how do you find the leads? Because I always just kind of resort to talking to a realtor and looking at Zillow and stuff like that. So what's a good, good source? List providers. So data source, priced. And you can do driving for dollars. You can do all, all the same bandit signs looking for land. You can target listed properties. Like all, there, There's tons and tons of resources out there. I've, I'm working on a deal in Atlanta that I literally Google mapped for dollars. I found this big old chunk of land near the city that was owned by one person. And I just sent him a postcard. And I found out who the owner was and sent it to his mailing address. And he's like, how'd you get my, how'd you get my information? I'm like, it's on the county. So it's, it's pulling a list, skip tracing it. And like for us, we do, we pull a list, skip trace it, and we, do P, and we do PPC. So we text and PPC, that's all we do for lead generation. And do you, do you ever uh, deal with like a realtor or anything? We sell with realtors on the other end because selling, when it comes to the sell side, you just pay them the 3% and you don't have to deal, you don't have to worry about it. Most of the time they'll do transaction coordination for you. So you just let them do their thing. We make enough money. We can give some away. Good questions, good questions. So it's inevitable that when you guys start marketing to sellers, someone's going to tell you they have some land, right? Yes. So how are you running your numbers like for somebody that's just starting out yeah. and they get an opportunity for some land? How are you running numbers on the fly? We use just the resource, free resources we have. Like people, there's some people that use like PropStream and stuff like that. Literally, we use Zillow. We find a price per acre for the similar size lots that sold in the area. And that's kind of gives us like a base ARV of what it is. And we just need to be loosely close because we're always going to, if we get this thing at a good price, we can always sell our finance and raise that price on the back end. So we're actually creating comps whenever we sell our finance. So when you guys are looking for land, like, like as far as for infill lots, like in the city, or rural acreage. Good is question. It- good question. So there's a lot of land niches out there. So you kind of let's kind of start in the city. It's, it's a it's a question I'm gonna cover. So when you're in the city, you have info lots. It might be house, land, house, house, land, business. Those are info lots. So it's kind of inside the rural city. Those are gonna vary in price because there's a lot of different var- variables in it. It could be the size of the lot. It could be the car count that passes. If it's a hard corner or not. Why do you think McDonald's are on hard corners? So the price of the value goes up but based on the depending on where the location is of that lot in the city. Us personally, I have clients that do, I have a client that he's done multiple six-figure months just targeting those lots in general in Florida. And that's what Matt Rogers does too. But us, we look for 50 acres or more within 50 miles of the city. And the reason why is because you can't find 50 acres in the city no matter what. And if it is, it's going to be an exorbitant amount of money. And usually it's cut up by then. But if you find most people... And this is a good question for everybody here. People that work in San Diego or in LA, where do they live? They live in Temecula, Menifee, all those places in the middle. So they're willing to travel. So it's the same thing for people that want land. People that want land recreationally, like the gentleman back there, they're going to buy it within a certain radius of an airport and a major city because they want, they want the luxury of space, but they still like the, the, the proximity of, of the city because it, it might have an international airport. It might have concert halls. It might have all that stuff. So we're looking for within 50 miles of any major city in Texas. We're doing stuff nationwide now, but it's mostly we're trying to stay within that range because most people aren't willing to travel past that. And you kind of, the value of the land drops significantly just because there's not many people buying past that point. 
And what type of demographic of buyer do you guys usually usually I mean, do you guys have an, like a certain demographic of buyer you usually sell to? Like is it mainly just developers or is it random people or farmers or it's it's a little bit of both. Uh, we sell to a lot of Hispanic buyers because the American dream is owning property. So we sell a lot of Hispanic buyers and we sell to a lot of businesses. Like uh, we just sold a lot to uh, a mobile home developer. So we sold it to him at low down payment, high interest rate. His whole idea is he's going to put a mobile home on there because he has a mobile home hookup that he's going to put on the lot and sell it again. So we're providing a service that's needed in the market where we're not doing any development. We're not breaking ground. We're not doing anything like that. We're just adding paperwork to the deal and selling it into a bite-sized parcel. And the majority of people that, that come to our events just mainly deal in, you know, actual like stick builds or metal builds, whatever the case may be, their houses. So when you guys are locking these land deals down, what type of agreements are you guys using? Did you just have your attorney draft one up or is there a mock one that you can share with everybody here? We have our attorney do all our docs. One of the, our things is that me and my partner, we haven't just signed any paperwork. We have our attorney fill out the paperwork, we just sign it. We have zero buyers. Our, our, our buyers are the retail market. So think about this. If, if you're contracting houses, you have to sell to an investor who's going to sell it to the retail market. So you have to double, you have to like divide your potential spread on the deal. Us, we sell straight to the re retail market. So we don't have any buyers. We take that whole wholesale price to retail and that's why we make so much money. Got it. Awesome. Another, another question. What about like when you want to divide? What's the process to, or how would you know something is dividable and where would you go to learn that? The, the biggest thing, it, it's, it's going to de depend on your state, which is why we stick to Texas because we know the law. Texas, as long as it's 10 or more acres, you can subdivide it with an engineer. I don't know the law here in California. I'm sure we can look at it and figure it out, but we just haven't done any deals here to know what the law is here. But in Texas, it's 10 or more acres. You just have an engineer. We have an engineer, part of our team, that'll do it for equity. And that's so no money out of pocket. How did you go about finding a buyer's list for for land? Like, did you just put it on Facebook Marketplace? Like, find um, developers. Right now, right now we have no buyers list. We sell straight on the MLS. We put it right on the MLS and let the and let the agents sell it. And one of the ways we move it on the MLS is we offer seller financing. So all the deals that sit in the MLS, they're trying to get their cash price right now. Whereas when we sell our properties, we're always offering seller financing. So that's why our deals move. So it doesn't cost money to divide up your land? You just it it depends on how many how many acres it is, but it's usually thirty to sixty thousand dollars from an engineer standpoint to subdivide the land. So we have we ended up finding a guy that wanted to do it for equity, so we don't have to come any money out of pocket, and that's what he does for us. Good question. All right, so Matt Rogers is mainly Florida, and you're mainly Texas, and you said you have a network within HiveMind. Yes. So let's say if I get something in, like, Idaho, then I will reach out to you in HiveMind? Honestly, you just post it in the group. I have – Idaho's – we have a lot of clients in the major much multiple areas, uh, metro, Mount, metropolitan areas. Wow. Okay. But Idaho, I'm sure we have somebody I can link you up with. Everybody knows somebody. And if you just put it out there, somebody will respond. Okay, awesome. And then and you said you don't really touch California right now, but is there a lot of people are not concentrating on California, so would you do California if the opportunity arose? It depends on the deal. Like I said, we'll look at any deal anywhere, but our bread and butter is Texas. So we have deals sent to us in Oklahoma. I think uh, Stephen has one in New Mexico. We'll look at deals in other places. It's just we really have to do a little bit more of our we have to stretch a little bit on those. Where if it's Texas, it, we'll, we'll know really quick if it's a deal or not. So Dallas is a, is a place that you do or out of 30 Dallas, minutes, out, out, an hour outside of Dallas? We bought 120 acres, literally 60 minutes outside of Dallas that we're trying to move for 600. And we bought it for 175. Perfect. Yeah, Dallas is hot. As Steve mentioned, you know, when you reach out to sellers, some of them always have some land, right? So that happened here. Uh, it was a duplex in Claremont. Didn't make sense for creative or the way he wanted to structure it. But he's got land in Kern County, a tiny lot. Is that something someone would be interested in helping him out for? I don't uh, even know what you would do with it. It's not even that large, but... Somebody will buy it at the right price. Somebody yeah. will buy everything. So 
Should uh, sell or finance it. <laughs> sell or finance it, legit. <laughs> our, our whole thing is that we like doing large parcels that have value because mm -hmm. the paper is worth a lot more. Sellers ain't going to default on it. You're that paper, once you sell it once, it's going to stay there for a long time. So with small little lots, you can do it. It's just not our strategy. We're, not, we're trying to create good paper that we can leverage. Mm -hmm. And by paper, you mean your notes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. You, you mentioned you were a truck driver. It's funny because I, I drive for UPS too. And uh, every time I drive through like Oklahoma, I see like billboards saying acres of land for 180,000, you know? So who, who, who are the end buyers for that? Like I, I get that you, you get the land, you lock it down. Who, who really is buying the, that land and, and what for? It doesn't really make sense to me in, the, in that so, regard. So middle of Oklahoma, it comes down to that proximity. There's nothing out there. Yes, those, those properties move hands, but it's really hard to find a buyer because it's just nobody's buying out there. There's no movement. The whole reason why we stay within proximity of big markets is because people are always expanding out into further markets. So people always think, where's the opportunity in land? Well, it's ever growing. As communities grow and shift, they expand into land that's not taken. So 6% of the U.S. is land. So think how much proximity there is. So as, as a city grows, it just takes up and that value of land becomes more and more and more. So there's always opportunity just outside, just outside, the, the, just outside the city lines. And it's always ever expanding. Right, but uh, so who really are the end buyers then? Who, who, really, who buys these deals from you? Well, it's people, people that have, oh, that's a, that's a great question. So people that buy houses, you, what are they gonna do with it? It's an investment that they're gonna live in that they're going to Airbnb, that they're going to rent and rehab, or let their, cut, let their grandma live there. Who buys land? People that can afford to. They need a recreation. They have a, they have a plan to build something on it. They have a clean slate. So with land, you li once, once, there's a, once there's something built on a property, it's kind of set forever. Like It's really hard to change the zoning and tear that house down and build a multifamily. So once you build that first thing on it, that's kind of what it's going to stay for a long time, for a very long time. So with land, you kind of it's uh for all all people that do stocks, it's you're buying at the bottom. You can go duplexes, multifamily, single family, office, retail. You can go any direction you want, and that's kind of the cool thing about land is the people that buy it, they can if, if it's in an up and coming area, they can build whatever they want. They just have to go through the county and get a variance to build up that whatever property they want. So there's a whole there's a whole people that strategies that they target infill lots in populous areas. And all they'll do is they'll buy it at retail prices, and then they'll, hey, if I build, they go to the city, and this is called a, a variance. They'll go to the city, hey, if, can I build 20 multifamily units on this? Well, yeah. You just need this permitting and uh, engineer to draw up plans. All right, perfect. Engineer to draw up plans. They'll do all that stuff. And now that, now that same property has tripled in value, quadrupled in value, just because they did the paperwork for a new build. And they don't have to build it. There's builders out there that are looking to buy that paperwork and that land as a package because it's essentially on a silver platter. They don't have to do that work. So there's, there's companies out there that all they do is they buy contract land, do a variance, and sell it off to builders that are actually going to build and developers. All right. Thank you. So you mentioned that you want to be within 50 miles of a major metro area. Like, yeah. is there population size or anything that you're looking at specifically or just like Looking at Houston, Austin, just like the obvious major ones, or what's your cutoff of what you're considering? It's just 50 miles. The reason why of anything, of anything, of anything. That's where the that's we call it like the donut. But the donut has a hole in the middle. That's the city. You're not going to find 50 acres or more in the middle of the donut. So you do outside the perimeter of that city itself, and that's where you're going to find all the all the good deals that we're looking for. There's deals in the city. There's deals out all in the midst of that. Like we just did an event in Florida. And there's houses along the, the, the river where they park their yachts. Most people have driveways and stuff. They literally park a boat. So what happens is when somebody wants the 20-year-old home or 30-year-old home, they'll buy it at full asking price, tear the whole thing off, and then build a mansion on the same property because it's, it's proximity, location, location, location. So they, there's only so many places you can park your yacht in Miami. So that's why it makes it so valuable. You might have said, but for your big purchase in Texas, the one that you divided up into 10, 11 acre lots or vice versa. Do you mind how much did you make off of each? You might have said, but how much did you make off of each one? So we sold it into uh, 11 acre lots. We ended up making 200K in cash and 200K in notes. 
over the whole on that one deal. On that one deal, a total. Because we had to pay off the seller, you we had, had to, to pay, pay off the private balloon. capital, yeah. and that's what we made on the back end. So you paid your balloon early because you sold off all the... Correct. The okay. Correct. Good questions, good questions. Harlow. What up, what up? All right, so a variance in San Diego is about a year to two year process, a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars. San Antonio, what are we looking at? We don't do that. We actually have a variance partner that will buy nationwide, and that's a good reason why we don't do variance. We're trying to literally, just like a wholesale deal, get in and out of these deals. So we're doing bigger deals, but we're trying to get out and out. So like a, a lot of and variance, it's going to be changed by different market. And we have a guy that does that. So if you guys have a variance property, that potential for it, we have a guy that we can we can push it onto, and still make a deal. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and uh, for like I said, it's just, the variance thing is it's time consuming. It's paperwork, and like I said, every every municipality is going to be completely different of what hoops they're going to make you jump through, and some aren't worth jumping through. At least for me. <laughs> Anyone else? Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for coming, guys. I appreciate the questions. I enjoyed being up here. I hope you enjoyed the, the talk. I don't talk very often, but I do have a podcast, so I guess I'm lying. <laughs> Thanks for all coming out. I do come here to contribute and help out the communities, and I do support all my clients, so I try and help out them whenever they need it. So that's the difference of the hive mind and other, other companies. I really try and put foot, my foot full forward and help them out wherever they need it. No, thank you, Daniel. Appreciate it. Hey, guys, remember, if you're walking out of here with no new numbers, you're doing it incorrect. So have a beer. Talk to everybody around here. They could be your next partner. All right? Thanks for coming, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, and if you have any questions about Hivebind, you can literally text that same number. That's how you get a hold of me. That's how his team gets a hold of me. They literally text that number. That's how all, I manage all, all the clients. All the time. That's how I, that's how I manage all my clients. <laughs> there you go. For Thanks, sure. guys. Have a good thank one. Thank you, guys. The show is sponsored by The List Guys. Do you need more leads in your local or virtual market? One in 10 small businesses don't invest in any kind of marketing. The List Guys have over 35 plus list types to choose from and you can mix and match any list or criteria. We also use the skip trace list and provide up to seven numbers and email addresses. Every list you purchase will be scrubbed against previous purchases. The List Guys are here to save you time. Contact the List Guys today at www.1listguys.com. That's www.the number one listguys.com.